Hello, you tuned in to Katie Talk One on One. Big shout out to On Sight. So this is a former mobster. He actually recalls Reverend Al Sharpton and how he used his own people to make money. Take a listen to this. He was a soldier in that family, and uh, Al Sharpton used to answer to him. So I met Al because I was associated, my dad was associated with a company called Spring Records in the record business. Roy and uh, and Julie Rifkin were the two owners, and they used to engage Al Sharpton to bring them black talent to their record label, and they would actually pay him for it. He was kind of a gun for hire. Al, go out and get me some people, you know, some of your black talent, bring it to the record company. If we sign them, we'll pay you for it. So that's how I originally met Al, and if you met Al back then, you wouldn't recognize him. He was pretty heavy set. used to wear warm-up suits, had long hair, gold chains around his neck. He was a character. I don't know how much of a reverend that he was, but he was certainly a character. So we became friendly during that time. Two instances in particular with, with uh, Reverend Al that I can talk about. One, I, was, um, I had a security guard union that was under my control. A guy by the name of Danny Cunningham uh, operated that union. But it was under my control. Danny was with me. And we had a plan to unionize the security guards in Atlantic City. First, the restaurant and bartender workers, we were going to unionize them also. But the real serious play was with the security guards under Danny Cunningham. At that time, Nicky Scarfa, he had some influence in Atlantic City. I met up with Nicky. By the way, many of you have asked me about him. I know his reputation, pretty violent. He and I got along well. I like Nicky a lot. We met with him a couple of times and always got along great. So we were going to unionize them. And what we needed, we needed uh, people to pick at the hotels. So I go to old Al. I said, Al, I need your help. You got to round up some of your crew. And we're going to pick at the uh, hotels in Atlantic City so that we can get the security guards to unionize there. And I'm going to quote this. I don't want to be offensive, but I'm going to quote what Al Sharpton said to me. And you could take this to the bank. He said to me, Michael, you pay me good and I'll have a bunch, uh, a few busloads of ends, use the N word, there day and night picketing that building. That was Al Sharpton. He was a gun for hire. Yes, he used his people at that time to make money. That's what Al was all about back then, okay? I'm not going to comment on what he is today. He says he's transformed his life. In many ways, I see, you know, some of the things that he did back then. He seems to be doing today. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm not involved with him anymore. Another serious situation with Al. I was a subject of an undercover operation called shadow boxing. The FBI had put a, uh, an undercover operation together where they were trying to uh, see how organized crime was infiltrating professional boxing. The targets of that investigation were Don King and myself.